Hey there! Happy Tuesday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's the time that we can relax and craft together here uh, for about an hour. Uh, so, all right, we are continuing with the Splendid Sampler to quilt along. Uh, there's 100 blocks in this guy, and uh, we are... I think we have 27 left after, or 26 after this one. So we started one last night. This is the Lotus on Pond, I think. Yep, Lotus on Pond. There we are. So we are going to finish this guy tonight and we're gonna get hopefully pretty far on a second one. I think we're gonna just do another applique one and just another raw edge applique. The instructions have it for needle turn applique, but that takes forever and I'm in the mode of like, let's get her done. Uh, so we are gonna do a uh, another applique, uh, another raw edge fusible applique one um, and we'll get that going tonight. So, all right, let's get sewing. All we have to do on this is sew the edges and it'll pop a little bit more. I mean, it's, you can hardly see what's going on right now, but I think once we get the um, outlines in, like with this bright orange that we're sewing with, I think that will uh, help it out a, a bunch. So let's do it. Okay, everyone, thanks for hopping in. There, now I can see your comments there. Hello, Sally. Hey. Uh, Lydia and Adrian. Okay, so here is our little dude here. So all I have to do yet is uh, basically trace around each edge with um, the sewing machine. That's it. So I think we'll start, maybe we'll go like around here and then, then this. This can be like just around once and then we'll come back, get this guy yeah, and then I think we'll end with um, the li lily pad. Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to head over to the machine, and uh, we'll see how it goes over there. Uh, and just so you guys know, we're having our special of if you order $20 or more in the shop, then um, you'll get a free mystery gift. All right, so I'm going to just, let's pop the light on here. There we go. Uh, I don't think I need the leader here, so I'm going to take that off. We might use that later, though. I'll have it nearby. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to just go around this outside edge. How do I want to do that? I think let's go in this, like, inner moon shape and then I'll go all the way around. That's different than what I just said earlier, but um, I think that's how we'll do it. And I'm gonna just kind of ride the inside edge of my um, my presser foot there. And I am gonna make the, should I make the stitch length smaller? Yeah, I think we'll make the stitch length smaller. Uh, then it'll be, um, There'll be more stitches and maybe our curves will be a little bit, bit better. We'll see. So hello everyone again. See everyone popping in. So I'm going to go slow with this. I may have to lift up the presser foot every now and again to get it, but I am trying to stay within that like, I don't know, 16th of an inch or so top stitching basically. I'm trying to be smooth too, just because this is going to be very visible, our, our top stitching here. All right, one more, I think. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to lift up. We did decent enough there. All right, let's go around this whole deal. So this seems to be working without me having to pick up the foot. So that's, that's nice. So we've already fused this and uh, um, now we're just kind of doing that final attachment. I kind of want to get these guys out of the way. Get these threads out of my way. Actually, I think we'll just get the top one out of the way. We'll let the bottom one be. Hmm. be 
off. Let's see if I can shift it there. Uh, okay, I gotta make a bigger shift, so let's lift that up. Didn't want to turn that well on that tight of a curve. I think it's looking good though. So I think that's that. Let's lift that off of there. Okay, so this looks so much better as far as an outline. So now we can actually start to see like that little little outline. Oh, you guys can't see, hold on. Uh, we can start to see the, the outline there. Uh, so now even from far away, we can start to see to see that, that shape kind of pop. So it's, it's subtle, but it's there and I think it makes a big difference with with this um, with with this orange thread. So I'm gonna go do this side. We'll tuck in all these threads after. So I'm gonna start kind of where this thread ended. Um, we're doing that little stem point here. I feel like I go in full concentration mode here. All right, kind of down to the points. Eh, one more, sure. All right, let's rotate and come back up. I do like the little the little stitch length, so I'm doing that just that that very small stitch length. Uh, so that's that's helping me be able to turn a little bit. I think. All right, I think right there. Okay. And last up, I think that's looking good. Last up, let's get this. I think, um, I think I'll start on that edge there. So I'm not back tacking or anything. I'm gonna actually bring the threads to the back when I'm done. Because I think that'll look just a little bit better. That's kind of what we've been doing on these appliques. We've been kind of tying things down on the back. Because then you can't really tell uh, where you start and stop the um, uh, the thread. All right, let's rotate. And uh, get this the rest of this outside here. I am having to lift up the presser foot a little bit here and there, just because there there are some tight curves here. Uh, did you post the roller skate? Oh, I did. Robin, I, I commented on it. Um, Robin stitched our uh, over on TikTok stitched our the roller skate design, and it turned out so sweet. And she made the uh, she made the the um, shoelaces uh, yellow. They were they were black. It was kind of like a black outline sort of pattern and uh, the shoe the yellow shoelaces look super duper cute Robin hey there uh, pieces uh... ooh finally working on the back of a quilt nice that's a big freaking quilt too uh, 120 by 90 inch um, dang I got a few quilts uh, that I gotta do the back on it's 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 weighing on the brain a little bit, like having to get these these quilts done. And you guys, I just started another crochet project. Uh, I'm crocheting, like I'm gonna be crocheting three more doilies and I'm doing them all at the same time and it's all gonna be the same pattern and it's a pattern I haven't done before. I don't know what got into me, but I just, I'm like, oh, I, I need to do another doily. And so I'm actually crocheting a, a few more doilies that are um, being crocheted out of uh, um, excess embroidery floss that I have. So, you know, we do tons of embroidery patterns. We do tons of stitching here live. So when I'm done with a project instead of like rolling up the floss onto a bobbin or something I've just been throwing them into 
uh, a little like fabric box that I have, or like a little zipper pouch box thing. And uh, it's full again, so I'm like, ooh, I could stitch, I could crochet a doily out of um, all that floss, and I'd be using up that floss, and then like the little excess pieces I could make into a pom-pom, and <laughs> so I don't know. I just started a couple doilies, and then I'm doing, I, I started a warm colored one and a cool colored one just out of embroidery floss scraps. And uh, then I think I'm gonna do a black and white one too with embroidery floss s scrap. So I haven't started that one yet, but I have black laying around. So I, I might, I might just like grab, grab out of my bin of floss and then divide it up into the black and white versus cool colors, which are like blues and greens and grays, versus um, warm colors, which are like the browns and um, yellows and reds and oranges. And I'm just crocheting on a doily <laughs> all at the same time. All right, I think we're done with this. Oh, well, we gotta weave in the ends yet. So let's take a look quick. But yeah, so with all these unfinished projects around, I'm still starting new freaking projects. Oh, you love the porcupine. Oh, thanks so much. Um, our little hedgehog. Uh, oh yes, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a really large, that's a large quilt. That'll feel so good that, to have a back done for that though. That, that's a huge accomplishment. That's a huge part of the process. All right, here is our design so far. It definitely helped outlining. I mean, it, it's still pretty subtle, but our whole quilt's a little subtle. Uh, our whole quilt, you kind of got to get up in there to, to see stuff. Um, so here we are with the outlines. It, it really does make a difference though. Um, so let's tuck these in. So I'm going to do that by pulling these threads to the back and just tying it off. And that way we won't see any like back tacking or anything like that. So all right, I'm going to start down here. I'm going to just kind of shorten the front ones a hair. And we'll flip it around. Let's get my little guy in here. Okay, so here are the two. I'm going to just pull up a little bit and then there a little loop should come up. That's the other, the front thread pulling through to the back. If you just tug on it for a little. I gotta isolate this one. All right, there we go. Popped up. There we go. So now I'm just going to tie these in knots and I'm so putsy with this. Like it's, I feel like I got huge giant monster hands when I when I do this but I just do it in slow motion and we get there <laughs> so I'm just tying it in like a little square knot actually it's not feeling too too bad tonight that was a quick easy one awesome it's early for surgery yet here that's that's what's happening I'm doing my little back surgery my sutures here Out of here, thread. There we go. All right, this is a little, I mean, it's a tedious little extra step, but I don't know, I'm kind of into it now. I like I like being able to pull these threads to the back. So these will be tucked in into the quilt, but like from the front, we just have a perfect start and stop. Um, it just stops, uh, the thread just stops right where we want it to. And uh, there's no like back tacking or anything like that. Uh, did I use a fusible or spray glue, um, Jenny? So for this, I used a fusible, I, and I'm going to use it again tonight because we're going to do a, a similar, a similar style. We're going to do another fusible piece. Uh, I used the Steam a Seam Two Light. So the light. This is just such a horrible name. The light Steam a Seam Two is what I'm using here, and. Uh, um, it's sticky on both sides, so I was able to stick everything down and then, then fuse it. All right, let's do these two here. Again, I'm just kind of trimming the front ones just so they're not so crazy when I pull them back. Okay. Pull it up and grab it. Okay. 
there we are. Did it one at a time this time instead of grabbing both nearby ones. Trim. All right, pull this guy up. Oh, I must have already did. There we are. All right, I hope y'all had a lovely Tuesday. I keep thinking it's Wednesday today, but I guess for some of you it's Wednesday, all you future peeps. Here it's still Tuesday. Okay. Let's do this guy up here. Trim him. This, this guy looks short enough, so I don't have to trim that one. Ugh, we're gonna get a whole nother block uh, checked off the list. I'm stoked for that. I think we have one waiting to be sewn into a group of four. Oh, I can't tell from here. But yeah, we need we need to get four of four finished blocks again um, to be able to sew them together. Because we're sewing them in, into groups of of four and then then doing like our little quilt as you go process. Okay, last one here. So this is a pretty painless quilt block, and I think by doing the um, the next one as a uh, um, fusible fusible piece instead of a, a needle turn applique, I think it'll go pretty quickly for us too. So that's that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, there we are. Toss that away. So here is our finished piece. Uh, this is Lotus on the Pond, or Lotus on Pond. Uh, again, it's on page 100. And we got her done. So one more of our 100 blocks done. <laughs> so feel great about that. Let's cross it off at the beginning. I don't have my marker, so we're gonna use pen. So Lotus on Pond is done. And the next one, <laughs> this is horrible, but this next one is called Making Templates, and we are not going to actually make templates for it. So theoretically, um, for this one, let's, let's go to it. So page 87. Okay, so here it is right, right here, um, Making Templates. And it's theoretically called making templates because we're supposed to make all these little diamond and circle templates uh, for this to do our needle turn applique, but we are not doing that. We are just going to trace the design and do another fusible web like how we did here. So we won't have all these nice tucked under edges. It will be raw edged like this, but that's 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 where I'm willing to be at right now <laughs> to crank out more. Ooh, and we do have to before we get too far. Let's cross this. Uh, I kind of want to count again, but theoretically now I should have 26 unfinished ones. So from 27, so 26. Let's just double check. I, I feel like I write this so I don't have to count them again, but then I get paranoid that I didn't count it right. So we're gonna count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. All right, we now have 26 unfinished blocks out of our 100. So, man, we're not even three quarters done yet, but we're getting there. So, all right, making templates. Let's see. All right, we need a light print square. Oh, 7 by 7. Do we really? I think I'm going to cut it. We'll, we'll leave it seven by seven. So ultimately these are going to be cut down to six and a half inch, but sometimes with the applique ones, they have it start bigger because it kind of like pulls at the thread or at the um, fabric. So it ends up being a little bit smaller. Um, so I think we'll, we'll let it be bigger. That makes it easier for us later um, when we do, when we sew it together. So fine, we'll do a, a seven by seven. We'll do a white background. Cause again, one of the rules I'm doing with my quilt is if there is a, 
let's pick colors right away. If there is a background, like a clear background, I'm going to make it white. So let's get this white out again. So here's this Frankenstein crazy piece that we did white uh, from last night. So let's get that out. We'll definitely, let me put the iron on. We'll need that. Okay. And then we need uh, like a six inch square for the green oval. And then we need enough. Um, we need at least a six inch by eight inch piece to get all these little diamonds in. So we'll just see about that. Uh, we could actually do all different colors for the diamonds. That would be kind of neat. We could really use up some old, old fabric here. That would be kind of interesting. So let's, let's see, let's, um, let's first find the template and see kind of what size we're talking about. Okay. Applique patterns are on pattern sheet two. Uh, okay. This is pattern sheet three and four. So that would be on the other one. So these come with the book, which is handy, obviously. Oh gosh, we have not done this little camper one. Okay. This was in 2008, man, you guys, this was four years ago that we started this. That means or is this pattern sheet one? Okay, we need two opposite side. Ugh, gotta fold this whole thing out. Okay, right here we got it. Huh. It's interesting that they did the whole um, the whole design on here. I don't think they really needed to do that. We just needed we needed a, just a couple shapes. So all right, we got this goofy oval. It's not a circle. It's an oval, and then uh, then we got these guys. So all of those theoretically need to be traced onto here onto our fusible web. So this again is our steam -a seam This is our leftover from yesterday. Uh, now there is a thing you can do with this steam -a seam Maybe we'll try this this time. Uh, so how Pat Sloan does, does it, I haven't watched her stuff in a while, but like, as far as I know, she just does like a little edge of fusible. So she's not using as much. And I think in this case of this oval, maybe we do that because I'm pretty sure we can fit at least one diamond on the inside of the oval. So then we're not wasting as much um, of the, our fusible. So I think that's good. These other ones, I'll probably just do the whole fusible, um, the whole, I don't think it's going to gain us anything cutting out a little bit from the inside. So yeah, so we need six of these shapes and, and our oval shape. So let's, let's, start there. I know we didn't pick the colors yet of the other things, but I'm thinking if we're, ugh, my whole area is getting messy again, but, uh, I think if we're potentially doing different colors for all these, then uh, yeah, exactly. Linda, Linda says, um, maybe you'll find pieces in your scrap bag. Exactly. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, like maybe we just kind of do whatever for there. So we got to pick, we got to pick a background, like the oval background, Maybe that's like our darkest color and then everything else on top will be kind of like a middling color. Um, but anyway, so let's, let's start just tracing these on and then, then we'll pick colors. Cause then I can get rid of a bunch of all this stuff that's just laying around here. So I'm going to trace the, the designs onto here and I need to leave like an eighth inch or so in between each one. And I am going to try and, uh, put one of the diamonds or maybe even two of the diamonds on the inside. And then we'll just do like a teeny little circle. We'll just cut out a circle and that edge will be all that we have for the fusible of the, of the oval. So we're not like wasting all of this on the inside. So this is the same process that we did last night. So theoretically our design that I'm tracing here should be reversed. So it's not very apparent on this design because it's, um, because it's equal. Like if you flip this, it would be the exact same. There's a word for that that I can't think of right now. It's symmetrical. How about that? Uh, so this one, it doesn't matter if it's reverse or not really. Um, but like the Lotus one we did that obviously flipped, it looked, looked reverse. So, um, we're definitely, you definitely have to be tracing the reverse right now. And if not, you'll just have a backwards piece and no one's going to know. All right. 
Oh, nice. Uh, Jennifer says, I found mine and just fused the diamonds on and machine stitched around them. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Let it be. All right, so I do think I can fit. Oh, gosh, I think I can fit like three in here. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, I can fit one, two, three, and still have enough of, the, of an edge. Great, that'll save us a bunch of... Save us a bunch of fusible. I think I said last night that I had like three sheets of this left. I mean, we don't use it a ton, but I suppose we use it enough on this project. I should maybe see how many blocks are left that are going to require applique out of the 26. It'll be 25 after this one, actually. Um, and then I can see if I need to order more or not, because I'm basically just using this for this project. Although, if I want to do more applique later, you know, I suppose we used it on the other day on that cardinal pillow, or the, um, the bird pillow that we worked on. Um, so maybe I'll just place an order. Could always use more. So I'm just going to kind of assume that these are all the same. So I'm just going to just kind of trace another one in this circle here. So three, and I need six of them. This would have been a nice one to needle turn applique. I mean, these pieces are nice and big. They, they look like they'd be great pieces to needle turn applique, like do that process. But like I said, I'm over it. Let's, let's get this done. I'm just trying to see the best way to fit this guy. How about right there? I'm trying to be sort of careful here. Get these lines nice, because this is what I'll ultimately, uh, once it's fused to fabric and I do the final trim, this is what I'm going to use as my guide. So I want these lines to be pretty good. There is six, right? Yeah, OK, so two more. Okay. These aren't going to fit as nicely as the other ones. So I, uh, um, you know, I said I was crocheting those doilies. And even though it's a doily, I am using a different hook um, than my, the crochet hook that I just did that other doily out of, uh, because the, the embroidery floss is fatter, thicker thread than the sewing, the 12 weight sewing thread. So I'm actually using a bigger needle. You won't be able to tell, it's still one of these tiny metal needles, but I, I'm using a different needle and I haven't taken that needle out yet and uh, so i've been stitching this new these new doilies with um without the handle without the chunky boy handle on there and i'm telling you my hand is more fatigued than it was working on that other doily uh and i only worked on it for like an hour or two these new doilies so uh, man i th i'm thinking that you know, that was kind of like a test. I'm thinking that Chunky Boy really is working. Ooh, thanks for the uh, TikToks. All right, we are traced. Let's uh, trim this out. Actually, let's clean up a little bit. I can't stand all this stuff around here. So let's let's just, we don't need any of this stuff around. Ugh, folded it up wrong though. It's like those maps that you gotta do just right. I think I'm inside out, really, but who cares? It's like this now. Okay, that stuff out of the way. This stuff will scooch up top there. Um, I don't think we need this ruler. Um, we do need to cut out a uh, um, seven inch square, but I think I'll use the big, I'll use the big ruler for that. So let's get you out of the way. Um, get the, I'll, I'll get the big ruler once we're that far. All right, let's trim this out so I'm just gonna rough cut all these out I want to be you know at least an eighth of an inch away from each piece I'm not cutting on the lines quite yet okay and then on the outside 
outside of the circle. Oops, that was a kind of a big cut. The stick and stitch gets a weird fold in it, and then it doesn't, or not stick and stitch, um, steam away. Wait, steam a seam. <laughs> the steam a seam too kind of gets a, this little fold in, which I don't like. All right, so that piece is still good. Um, I'm, I'll probably keep this little piece too, because you never know when you need a little piece of this steam -a seam. Just throw that in there, and then the rest I'll I'll toss. So this raw edge applique's got all its little bits and steps that are kind of tedious, but I still think it's way faster than if we did the needle turn. So I'm I'm okay with this. So maybe tomorrow we'll finish this up because I don't think we'll finish it tonight. Um, but yeah, especially with the sewing and everything. But I would like to um, get it done this week yet. I'm going to just put a, like a tiny fold in here and, and snip. There we go. And now I can get in here. I'm going to cut these guys out first. Actually, maybe I should cut the circle. I'm going to cut the circle. So I'm just kind of going on the inside of the circle. So I need enough fusible on, on the piece. So I'm, I'm going like a quarter inch, a little bit more than a quarter inch on the inside of my line here. It's a little awkward to cut, but it's doing the job. But anyway, so maybe we'll finish this tomorrow. And then uh, I'm assuming we'll have a little time, not a ton of time left, but enough to putz around. So maybe I'll, I'll show you guys the uh, doilies I'm crocheting and we can stitch on those a little bit. I think that'd be kind of fun. Hey, Crystal. Or, Chris, yep, Crystal. Okay, so this is going to be our outside, our, that little oval now. So I, I didn't have to waste all that inside. Um, oh, shoot. Um, I didn't waste all the inside. So I was actually able to fit three more uh, diamonds on the inside of that. So, a little less waste. So just another reminder that uh, $20 in the shop will get you a free mystery gift today if you're watching during the live. Uh, and it'll just be like for the duration of the live, maybe a few minutes after. And it is the last week of our embroidery of the month. Um, the kit will still be available and the PDF, uh, but it won't have our free little bonus post-it notes in it. Um, and the fabric version will be gone. So if you just wanted the fabric version of the lilac kit, uh, that'll be done by Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday by 10, 10 o'clock is when we switch it over on Thursday to to the um to july it's july already sheesh all right we got our pieces finally um all right let's choose our fabric so we we're kind of talking about maybe doing a different fabric for each of these and then it'll be on white but it'll also be on this circle so this circle we either so here's here's the design again um we either do like maybe i mean so here they have like a light background a middle tone um circle or oval and then like theoretically like dark dark diamonds maybe that's our strategy like i mean everything's gonna pop at least a a little bit on um the white so we could do like maybe a very pale like maybe here's where we bring in these circles again or do we have something more pale and then like every all the dark or all the um all these these guys could be a little darker and i think i'll just stick to my light colors again not my my popping colors yeah you know what i think this is probably 
one of our lightest. So let's let's just think about this for a little bit. So for now, for now we're thinking um, these circles, or yeah, these these circles. I'm just moving my guys out of the way. So let's let's just fold this up like it's our circle, and that's going to be on the white. And now let's see how these other things pop out against here. And I do have this thing of scraps. Um, and then I sort of stopped using, like, collecting them. So let's see, gosh, if any of these are even big enough. All right, this guy's big enough. Let's just grab whatever is big enough as far as a scrap goes. Oh, that's cute. That looks good on there. So, all right, that's one scrap. We need six. Um, I'm just going to keep one of these out to see if it's big enough. Okay, not big enough. You're out. What about you? And not quite. <laughs> this might be trickier than, than I thought. Here. Oh, this one, this one sideways, I think, is big enough. All right, we're going to make you work. You're, you, you're a winner. This one, though, I think is too, too skinny. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of... Oh, we got another one of these. We could do more than one of of each color so like this one i think i could fit two in so we could do that uh just doubles oh here this one we for sure have enough so we could just do three maybe three colors yeah this one i think i can tuck two more in why don't we do that so we'll do three instead of six different i kind of like that let's do that Although one of these is, are popping out at me <laughs> as, as enough fabric. Okay, now I want to do six different. Let's do six different. There. Just got to find two more. I think I might have them right here. Are these big enough? Oh, no, we have that one already. What about this one? Eh, nope, you're too small. Ooh, look at you. You're cute little dotted one. Mm, I think we can make it work. I might have to trim an edge a little bit more, but I think we can make it work. What are we at? One, two, three, four. Let's do it on that one. Five. All right, I think we can make that one work too. That one's pretty light, but I kind of like it. Maybe we trade off yellows and these lighter colors. All right, we're going for it. Unless something just jumps out at me, but I think we're good. Yay, using scraps. I haven't done that a lot in, in this project. I should go through all those. It'd be fun actually to start sewing them together. Start like doing something with them. Okay. Pressing. That is the first thing we're going to do here for sure. Um, we do have to trim out our background fabric. But I'm looking at the time and I kind of actually would rather get all these stuck down. So, so our background fabric is still going to be this white, but I think maybe we'll uh, cut that out tomorrow. I think right now let's just worry about pressing and fusing these. And I think I'm going to do that at the same time. So let's just do these little baby pieces. So what I have to remember is my my um, the raw the wrong side has to be up. So I got to determine what the right and wrong side is. But I'm gonna just press a little area. Actually, I think we might be able to just use this tiny little bit over here. Is it gonna fit? Totally. So all right, I gotta peel. Peel the side, the paper side that I don't have my drawing on. Peel that off. There we are. And stick it on the back here. I want to make sure that none of the fusible is leaning over. 
the fabric because um, I don't want it to stick to my mat here. So a few seconds on there, and that'll do. And uh, there's our first piece, just throwing the excess out of the way. So we will trim that in a sec. I do kind of want to trim them all tonight. Yeah, we'll see how we do on time. Um, right side down, wrong side up. But I just don't want all these papers like floating around. <laughs> it's It sucks to have all like these little pieces of trash or these little like pieces that we need to like to save and be just perfect just being blown around when we're not working on it, so. Oh gosh, I can't get this sticky bit to stay. There we go. Great, so there's two. It doesn't matter if I don't hold it down quite enough, like it's still gonna fuse a little bit and it's not the final fuse because we will be, um, we'll be having to press this down to our back fabric yet. So lots of fuzzles hanging out. Okay, this one might be a little tricky one to fit in here. Ooh, nope, we got it. Get that right in there. Ooh, do I put a fold in? No. All right. Fuse that. Three more. Then we'll do our big circle. Or big oval, I guess. Circle fabric with an oval. I'm just kind of trimming like the excess that I'm actually going to save yet. All right. Next up. these funny pieces. So if I throw a scrap back, I need to make sure that there's no fusible on it because I don't ex I accidentally want to be like fusing it right now. I think you are going to fit right there. We're gonna do a little clean of this area tonight too. Uh, my space is getting smaller and smaller and smaller with all this quilting stuff everywhere. Save you. Two more. Oof, this one might be a tight fit. We'll see. It's pretty cute though. I'm going to trim um, I'm going to trim these edges just a teeny hair cuz it doesn't quite fit on. I'm just not trimming them so short that they um, that they're past my my pencil line. How about iron or fold dividing lines? Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, Linda, we'll do that. 
um, when we stick these down, kind of, are you saying like on the circle, kind of fold, fold lines into it? Ah, oh, come on, get off of there. Ooh, this one's tricky. The fusible doesn't want to stick to the right side. I'm going to try and pull down on this side. such a trick. The fusible is wanting to stick on the wrong side is what's happening right now, so I'm just trying to get it to stay on the uh, opposite side. Hmm. This one may have to be redone. This one's kind of being a bummer. Yeah, this just full on, the fusible is just not on this piece at all. Ugh, I've not had this happen before. Boo, yeah, this is a pain. I'm, yeah, I can't use that piece. So, all right, this guy's dead. We're gonna have to do that one again. Grr, that sucks. I might just cut out these pieces and do that one tomorrow. Let's trim this up again. Sometimes does this, um, doesn't want to stick on the right side. There we go. And it's just annoying then. But yeah, that, that one I'm going to have to do again for sure. All right. And I might wait for that for tomorrow. I might, might just, uh, let's just trim trim these ones. I think that feels more like what I want to do right now. So, all right, we got, we got these guys done. Let's just trim them up quick. Uh, we won't remove the paper, but we'll at least end up with some nicely trimmed things for the night. I do like that. So they're like little diamonds, but two corners. The obtuse corners are um, pointy in the, um, what's the opposite of obtuse and angles? Acute, the acute angles are, uh, got a rounded bit, rounded point. Ooh, this has fuzzles all on this side. Okay, so all of these little papers uh, I won't be saving. Circle. All right, so cute, nice little piece. And I'm just gonna leave, leave all that paper on until we have the rest of the pieces done. Okay. Oh, it's cute to turn them around. Pretty to see what they, they look like on on, uh, on the front. Some of these fabrics I haven't seen in a while, like this one that I'm cutting out now, this cute little polka dot, because uh, we used it all up and all I have left is little scraps, so I'm excited to have them be a part of the quilt again. Yeah, I like the polka dot. Okay. 
I am uh, cutting really carefully at this point because uh, these are the final, going to be the final nice edges. puzzles on that one. All right, last one for now. Let's get that oval pressed maybe and then then we'll just start we'll do that other other um you know ex extra one of these we'll do that tomorrow. He's being annoying. I don't want to deal with him again. There we go. Well, we got five out of the six done. That's something. All right, and then the last one will be this color here. Um, I'm not even going to worry about pressing that till tomorrow. But these fellers look awfully cute. All right, so I'm going to scooch them out of my way. I'm glad we did those six different colors. I think that's fun. All right, and now our oval. Hopefully that one comes off decent. Let's just kind of tuck him in right here. We'll try and go even with like the circles that are on, on here. Ooh, thanks for the hearts. Pressing. So we'll get to clean up a bunch of these edges it looks like too, which is nice. All right. This will go like right there. Let's hope this comes off easily. It looks like we're good. Oops. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Oh, this was dumb. Don't stick to each other. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Sheesh. All right, we got it. Gosh, maybe just a normal fusible would be, work better than this. A non-sticky fusible. All right, even enough, I like it. Fuse that down and then we'll trim, trim that nice outer oval and we'll have our pieces except for that silly one that did not work. That guy is gonna have to be redone. All right, but we'll trim this guy out and then we'll call it for the night. So tomorrow, uh, what we have to do yet is um, we'll, first thing, we'll do that final piece, that final little diamond that will be, that we're missing, um, that got messed up. And then we will press our white fabric, which is our background fabric. And uh, then we can fuse all these guys down and then we will sew around them again, like what we did tonight for the Lotus one. We'll sew them with our, with the sewing machine, just with a straight stitch. And that will be that for this block. I do think the stitching will take a little bit longer. There's a little bit more to stitch, so it might take the whole time tomorrow. We'll see. Again, this is where I'm trying to be super careful. Again, we just put the the um, steam seam, the fusible. We just put it on the edge this time. I don't usually do that, but we able we were able to save a bunch of fusible by doing that, and yeah. Full concentration mode as I cut. There we go. That's a good looking circle. All right, so this will be on the white. 
Oh, I'm glad to, I'm glad you're here too, Lizzie. Um, all right, so this will be on the white. So we gotta cut, we gotta press and cut our our seven inch square yet, but like let's just pretend it's right there. So this will be uh, uh, just it's awfully light, but I think that's okay. Um, we'll put that on there, and then we got these dudes kind of hanging out. Oh, it looks like they're really far in. So the the diamond parts, like the these corners, are a bit in on it, and then these ones are parallel to the ground. It looks like. I'm just peeking at, at the design. Yeah, those look parallel. So I don't know where each of our, each of our um, each of these arrows will go quite yet. So we'll decide that tomorrow. I kind of like trading off because we got all these yellow ones. We'll kind of trade those off a little bit maybe. So this is why it'll be nice that this is actually sticky uh, because then we can stick these down and then if they look weird, I, we can always lift one up and, and move it around. Um, the oval we can probably fuse right away, but like all the rest of this, um, we'll do and and there we are we're missing missing that one yet but it's it's really floral now i'm kind of liking it a little bit more uh all of these little diamonds look like their own little their own little uh petals their own little um yeah maybe when we quilt this we'll even treat it more like a flower that'd be kind of fun we could do a little circle on the inside uh flowers around if i would have thought about it i would have maybe fussy cut one of these circles right in the middle and then we could have gone th these could have all like come right out of that circle? I didn't think of that though <laughs> until now, but well, that would have been kind of cute too. Anywho, um, I think that's good for the evening. I think I'll just leave everything. I'll just let everything sit right here. I'll clean up around it. I, got, I, I can't have like all this extra garbage sitting around because that's that sticky paper and that just flies everywhere. So I'll clean up a little bit. Uh, but we did finish this guy today. So we have one more done. Ooh, and I just realized by the time we're, if we finish this one uh, tomorrow, which I don't know why we wouldn't, but then we're down to 25. So we're officially down to 25 unfinished ones. So we are officially three quarters of the way through <laughs> when we're done with this one, which is great. Um, we're, we're taking away at, at this quilt. We're, we're getting there. So awesome, everyone. I think we will end it there for the night. Uh, again, at $20 in the shop uh, while we're live, and I'll let it go for another 10 minutes or so after we're off. Um, $20, if you spend $20 in the shop, I will throw in a free mystery gift into your order. You don't need a special code or you, and you don't need to add it to your cart. I will just uh, see who ordered during this time and plop it in there. Uh, so thank you guys again for joining me. I appreciate it a ton. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow and we will finish this guy up. All right, have a lovely evening. Good night. Good night. <laughs>